It's Dramatic Listening, the podcast where you learn English by listening to radio plays. I'm your host and teacher, Wendy Lambert. Welcome back to Dramatic Listening. This is episode 89, and it's the first episode of a new story called Ticket to Tangier. This is a Harry Lime radio play, and that means our main character is called Harry Lime. I'm calling this dramatic listening episode, Why You Should Read the News. As usual, this story is serialized on dramatic listening. So altogether, there will be seven episodes making up the whole story. Dramatic listening is edutainment. Now that's a combination of education and entertainment. It's all part of helping you keep up your momentum in your English studies. By making learning fun and giving you something entertaining to listen to, I hope to keep you interested and motivated. The podcast is now one part of my larger ESL site called English Momentum. I hope you drop by EnglishMomentum.com to check out the site and to get the free PDF that goes with each episode of this podcast. Just register and log in. Registration's free. As a logged in member, you can download the free PDF. In it, you'll find the vocabulary and the transcript for the podcast episode so you can learn the words and read along. There's a new PDF with each episode, so I really encourage you to head on over to EnglishMomentum.com and become a member today. As I said, Today, we're starting a new story called Ticket to Tangier, and it's a Harry Lime radio play that was first aired on August 24th, way back in 1951. Harry Lime is played by Orson Welles. Orson Welles is very famous. He had a career in theater, radio, and film. He tried everything throughout his career. He, at one time or another, was a screenwriter, an actor, a director, and also a producer. As a movie director, he's known for his very distinctive style. Today's episode opens with a little history on Harry Lyme, the character. It connects the Harry Lime of the radio plays with the Harry Lime of the 1949 movie, The Third Man. So, who is Harry Lime? As a story character, Harry Lime is a criminal. Unlike our other stories, our hero is not a police detective or a private eye. He's a wanted criminal. He's wanted for breaking the law. The police would like to find him and arrest him. He's a businessman of sorts involved in illegal activity. Anything to make a quick buck. And yet, he's the main character of our story. The hero that we want to see win. Now, how does the bad guy become our hero? I hope that is something we can discuss as the story progresses, and I hope you'll join me in the comments at EnglishMomentum.com. As the story begins, we find Harry sitting in a pub in Paris, drinking a beer and reading the newspaper. This whole introduction is Harry talking to you, the listener. So there is no dialogue today. It's just Harry talking. That might make it a little more difficult to understand. Dialogue is easier. 
but there will be dialogue in the following episodes and throughout most of the play, so just try to stick with it. We'll listen to Act 1, Scene 1 shortly, but first we have 25 key words to learn. And remember, these words are all posted on Quizlet. So if you're a Chinese speaker, you could learn these words with English, Chinese, flashcards, and games at englishmomentum.com slash quizlet. And now for the key words. I'll be giving you the word, the meaning, and a model sentence for each one. Our first word is immortal. Immortal. Describe someone who lives on in people's minds as a legend, never forgotten, even though they've died. An immortal is somebody who's won immortal fame. Their name will live on. They'll be remembered, be famous forever. Liu Feng Bai Shi in Chinese, or a few others, Yong Chiu Bu Xiu or Ming Chiu Changgu. Although the legendary boxer Muhammad Ali passed away last year. His record-breaking victories and social activism have made him immortal. Immortal. Number two, zither. Zither is a stringed instrument that is plucked. You pull on the strings. It's like the Chinese guzheng. Uh, in fact, the Chinese guzheng is a zither, but the European zither is different. It's shorter, and it has 30 or 40 strings, so a lot more strings than the Chinese guzheng, but played the same way. The background music is performed by Anton Keras on the zither. Zither. Number three Sewer. Sewer. This is a noun and it refers to the underground tunnels under the roads of a city. Um, and these tunnels carry away the waste water, the used water. Xia Shui Dao. The sewers were full of rats, but he had no choice. There was no other way to escape. Sewer. Number four, beneath. This is a preposition. We don't use it too much. It means the same as under. Di xia. You can put your handbag beneath your chair while you enjoy the show. Beneath. Word number five, recount. This is a verb. To recount something is to tell the story of what happened. Jue Shu or Jue Shu. The detective needs you to recount your version of the events, even though you've already told the police. Recount. This is a bit of an unusual word. If you change the stress and you say recount, it means to count something again. Okay, in the United States recently, they've done a recount of the votes in the election. Recount. But this word, to tell the story of what happened, is recount. Word number six is a phrase. It's an idiom, down on one's luck. So down on my luck, down on his luck. It means you're out of luck or you've had some bad luck. Dao Mei. When my dad was 25, he lost his job for six months and was down on his luck. Down on his luck. 
Word number seven, scrape. This is a verb. It means you use something like a tool, um, such as a spoon or a spatula, to get the last little bit of something. Gua or huko. It's used metaphorically in this story to show that he had very little money left. So if you have a big barrel, a big container, and you put your rice in it, or you put your flour in it, and every day you scoop out a cup of flour and you make some bread, or you scoop out a cup of rice and you cook the rice. But You haven't filled it again for a long time, and every day there's less and less and less rice. So when you're scraping that last little bit up, you're scraping the bottom of the barrel. Scrape the bottom of the barrel means you don't have much money left. I hate it when teachers scrape their fingernails down the blackboard. Scrape. Word number eight, fall through. Fall through is a two-word verb. When a plan or a business deal doesn't happen, we say it fell through. Luo kong or pao tang. Well, I'm not flying to Hong Kong as my business trip plans fell through with the coming typhoon. Fell through. Word number nine, time on my hands. This is an idiom. It means to have free time, to have nothing to do. Wu shi ke zuo. Teenagers sit around a lot because they have too much time on their hands. They should look for work. Time on my hands. Time on anyone's hands. Word number 10, classified ads. So here we have an adjective and a noun. So we're talking about small ads, small advertisements that are grouped according to topic. So they're called classified. For example, there might be some ads for used cars, and that would be one group. Another group of ads would be apartments for rent. And another group would be personal ads. Classified ads. Fen lei guang gao. The worst place to look for a job is in the classified ads because the best jobs are not listed there. Classified ads. Word number 11. Personal column. Again, we have adjective and a noun. And in a newspaper, things are written from top to bottom in columns. So this is a personal columns. It's a group of classified ads where each ad is meant for a specific person. It's used when the writer has no other way to contact the recipient. Ren Shi Zhuan Lan If you're trying to contact her, try placing an ad in the personal column of the newspaper. Personal column. Word number 12, nature. Here's a word with a lot of different meanings. Um, This is a noun, and in this story we're using it to mean type or kind. Benxing. Or Xing. It's not in his nature to forgive once he's been offended. Nature. Number 13, hustle. Hustle. Spelt H U S T L E, but we do not pronounce the T. Hustle. This is a verb and it means to compete for business. Chung Shang Yi. The door-to-door book salesman had to hustle his books fast before the winter weather came. Hustle. 
Word number 14, operator. An operator can refer to a shrewd, skillful person who knows how to get around laws and rules that make it difficult to do business. In Chinese, we might call him a Shang Yi Jing, or Jiao Hua de Shang Yi Ren, or Jian Ren, or even Bu An Fen de Shang Yi Ren. That repairman is the smooth operator who convinced me to buy the new pipes. Maybe I didn't need them, so I think he was kind of tricky. Operator. Word number 15, gag. Gag is a noun, and it means a prank, a practical joke. I liked to play many gags on my roommate when we were in college. Gag. Word number 16 is a phrase, and it's an idiom. Grab a fast buck. A buck is a dollar. So if you grab a fast dollar, grab a fast buck, you make money quickly. And perhaps illegally. It kind of has that connotation, that associated meaning. Lao Qian in Chinese. The street gambler is always looking to grab a fast buck by playing craps. Grab a fast buck. Inclined. Inclined is an adjective and it means leaning to one side. So you you might uh, have something leaning against the wall. It would be inclined against the wall. Now, that's the literal meaning, but it can also mean more likely to or to prefer to have a mind to. So it's talking about somebody's tendencies. Yo yi or chung xiang. Are you more inclined towards the blue party or the green party when you vote? Will you be more likely to vote for blue or green? Inclined. Word number 18, queer. Queer. Now, this radio play is from the 1950s, and queer meant strange or fishy. It now has meanings of uh, being homosexual or gay, but uh, that's really not meant in this story. So it just means strange or fishy, guai or chi chow. There's something queer going on here between your boss and his assistant. So it's just strange. Um, don't read into that and think that it means gay or homosexual. It doesn't. Word number 19, come on. Come on. When I put that stress on the word come, and I have this, it looks like a two-word verb, it actually becomes a noun. So as a verb, it's like, come on, come on. And you're coaxing someone, you're trying to persuade someone to come. Well, as a noun, it's talking about that event. So a come on is something that's used to attract someone, to trap them. It's something that's used as bait. Just like when you go fishing and you put a worm on the hook and the fish comes and eats it and you catch the fish. So a come on. Um, yong shemadongshi, yong jinqian zuo yo er. So use money as bait, that would be a come on. So it's usually used in the context of sexual attraction. So a woman who's flirting might be um, giving a man some come ons. And the opposite, if she really doesn't like the guy, would be a turn off. So if she's trying to turn off his interest, uh, Maybe she'd spit out her gum and he'd go, oh, yuck. 
<laughs> so that would be a turn-off. But if she uh, moves her eyelashes and looks interested, that would be a come-on. Men are so easily led astray by some women's come-ons. Come-on. Word number 20, questioning. This is a meeting where the police ask a suspect many questions, also called interrogation. Wen Hua, or Jin Shun. You're coming down to the station for questioning, the officer told the suspect. Questioning. Number 21, port. This is a noun. It's another word for harbor, where the ships come in and they're able to stop and take off their load of supplies and load up again at the harbor, at the port. Gong or high gong. The goods are slowly shipped out of the seaport. Word number 22 is an idiom. What sold me? And if you continue the sentence, you'd need to say on. Or if you, if you need a prep phrase, you need the preposition on. So what sold me on something is the thing that convinced me. Your great description of the place really sold me on taking a vacation to Bali Island. What sold me on it was your description. Word number 23, complication. A complication is a noun, and this is a minor problem. There was a small complication that delayed us getting through the customs check. But we got through, everything was okay in the end. Okay, but it was a complication. Word number 24, financial resources. Two words, adjective and a noun. Financial resources is the source of your money. The source of revenue, cai yuan. You need to get your financial resources in order before you think of getting married. Financial resources. Word number 25, our final one, is a phrase, raise money. Now, this meaning of raise means to get money for a specific purpose. Cho Kwan or Mu Kwan. So we can sell cookies to raise money for the development of the new playground. Raise money. Well, that's it for the key words. Let's listen now to Ticket to Tangier, the introduction and Act 1, Scene 1. This part of the play is four minutes long. Long. Presenting Orson Welles as the third man. The lives of Harry Lyme. The fabulous stories of the immortal character originally created in the motion picture The Third Man with zither music by Anton Karras. That was the shot that killed Harry Lyme. He died in a sewer beneath Vienna. As those of you know who saw the movie, The Third Man. Yes, that was the end of Harry Lyme. But it was not the beginning. Harry Lyme had many lives. And I can recount all of them. 
How do I know? It's very simple. Because my name is Harry Lyme. I was down on my luck, way down, scraping the bottom. A couple of deals had fallen through, and I found myself in Paris with a lot of time on my hands and only the price of a beer in my pocket. I was spending my time and the money at Fouquet's, not because the beer is any cheaper at Fouquet's, but because when you meet a nicer class of people, and besides that, you read the newspapers free. So I was reading a newspaper, and I came on the advertisement, one of those classified ads in the personal column. It was addressed to Harry Lyme. Harry Lyme being me, I read on with some interest. There was no signature, no address. Mr. Harry Lyme, it said will find a business opportunity of an extremely profitable nature in the city of Tangier. Now, I might have thought this was one of the boys trying to hustle me out of Paris or just trying to be funny, except that the advertisement mentioned the city of Tangier. Now, why Tangier? There are very few places in the world I haven't been to, and Tangier just happened at the time to be one of them. Also, Tangier, as everybody knows, is full of money, and I... I couldn't imagine anybody wanting to send me there right in the heart of the free gold area where every second address is a bank and every second person's an international operator just just for a gag. Probably more chances in Tangier to grab a fast buck than you'll find in the world today. So I'm inclined to take the ad a little seriously. Of course, it might have been a police trap. There are cops in countries all over the globe busy looking for me. And some of them are just sharp enough to try to pull me in on a queer come on like that. But the truth is that one of the only cities left where they don't happen to want me for what's known as questioning is the port of Tangier. That's what sold me. There was just one complication. My beer was finished and with it my financial resources. How to raise the price of the ticket. So now it's time for the walkthrough. So the radio host begins by introducing Orson Welles as the voice actor, and he says he's playing the third man. So the third man of the movie, the third man, was Harry Lyme, and once again he's still playing Harry Lyme. Now he's immortal. He describes him as the immortal character Harry Lyme, or the third man. So in the movie, Harry tells us, or the narrator tells us that Harry Lyme died at the end of the movie. Now that doesn't usually happen. You don't usually kill off your main character, but in this movie they did. Or at least we're led to believe that at the end of the movie. So he lives on in people's memories, in people's hearts, but he died. And then he also introduces the background music, which is the Zither music by Anton Karras. Did you like the music? You can actually get that music on iTunes. Um, it's the background music for The Third Man, the movie. And when they made the movie, Orson Welles was going to ask Anton Karras to just do the main theme song, but he just fell in love with that zither music and got him to make the music for the whole movie. At the end of the tune, we hear a gunshot, and he tells us that was the shot that killed Harry Lyme. He died in the sewer, in the underground tunnels under the city, the police were chasing him and he died there beneath Vienna 
the city of Vienna in Italy. So he tells us um, that he died there in the movie, but actually in the movie, the police have to conclude that he died. They don't actually have his body, so there's always hope that he's still alive, and that's why his legend can live on. So the radio play stories were made after the movie, but the setting of the radio play stories is before the movie. These stories, these events happened while Harry was alive. However, we find out we're listening to Harry tell us the story. So, hey, shouldn't this guy be dead? So it's kind of playing with our minds uh, and making us wonder, is his death fact or fiction? Is he still alive? Is this really Harry Lyme telling the story? So he tells the story, or he recounts the story. He says, let me tell you what happened. Act 1, Scene 1. He was in Paris, and he was down on his luck. He had some bad luck because his business deal fell through. So, Kong. And uh, he's scraping the bottom of the barrel. I mean, he only has enough money in his pocket to buy a beer. That's really scraping the bottom of the barrel. No money left. And he had some time on his hands, nothing to do in Paris. Hey, what do you do when you have no money? So there he is, sitting in the pub, drinking his last beer, that he can pay for, and reading the newspaper. That's something he can do for free at Fouquet's, the hotel or pub where he's drinking his beer, provides the newspaper for free. So he's looking at the classified ads, the Funle Guangao, and he looks down them for a while, and he, he gets to the personal column that group of classified ads that are written to specific individuals. So if someone doesn't know how to get a hold of you, well, today they probably start looking for your profile on Facebook or LinkedIn or somewhere like that. But um, in this day and age, in, in the time of Harry Lyme, 1950s, they would use the personal column of the newspaper. So the Ren Shi Zhuan Lan. And he saw an ad that was addressed to him, Harry Lime. He doesn't know who wrote it. He doesn't know their address. It just says, Mr. Harry Lime will find a business opportunity of an extremely profitable nature, a very profitable kind of business opportunity in the city of Tangier. It's almost like reading your fortune, Chinese fortune cookie, right? Okay, so this opportunity is of an extremely profitable nature. Yolika to the Jihui. He can really make a lot of money. So he thought, hmm, is this for real? Or is it one of the boys, somebody I know, some of one of my competitors or a group of them, who want to hustle me out of Paris. Hurry up, get out of here. You're too much competition. Do they want to chong shang yi, hustle me uh, in business? He's very interested, though, because of the mention of the city of Tangier. Now, that's in Morocco, a country in the northwest part of Africa. Harry has never been there. He's been almost everywhere, but he's never been to Tangier. And yet he knows it's a good place to make money. There are lots of banks and lots of international operators. So people go there to do business, and uh, there's a lot of shady business deals as well, not completely honest, but you can make a quick buck. So... 
a lot of people from all different countries, international operators, skillful business people that know how to get around the laws. And actually, that's why they're in Tangier. So these are Shang Yi Jing or Jiao Hua de Shang Yi Ren. And he wonders, though, if this is just a gag. Are they playing a joke on him? Is it a practical joke? But there are so many opportunities in Tangier to grab a fast buck, make some money quickly and perhaps illegally, but he doesn't really care about that. Um, so he's inclined to take the ad a little more seriously. He leans that way. He's more in favor of saying, this is a good deal, than saying, ah, forget it. This is a prank. This is a gag, a joke. And then he wonders, hmm, or is it a police trap? And he tells us that police all over the world are looking for him. And some of them might be smart enough to use a business opportunity in Tangier, as a come on, as bait to trap him. He calls it a queer come on, kind of strange and fishy, chi guai or chi chow, but a come on nonetheless. Yong jin qian zuo yor. But Tangier is a city where no one's looking for him. The police there don't want to bring him in for questioning Jun Shun because he hasn't done anything wrong in Tangier. He's never been there before. And that's what sold him on it. That's what convinced him Shui Fu taught Shur because he knows he's not in trouble in Tangier. So going to the port of Tangier, the city is in the at a harbor, a port, Gong or Hai Gong, um, and he figures this is a good deal. This is safe. I can go there and make some money. However, there was just one complication. There was a minor problem. Jurjia went he. His beer was finished, and with it, all of his financial resources. He had no money left. So his problem is, how can he raise money for this ticket? How can he get enough money to buy the ticket? Raise money is often translated as cho kwan or mu kwan, but he just wants to raise it, not necessarily by donation, but he needs to get some money fast. Well, that's it for the walkthrough. Let's listen again to the introduction and Act 1, Scene 1 of Ticket to Tangier. Presenting Orson Welles as the third man. The lives of Harry Lyme. The fabulous stories of the immortal character originally created in the motion picture The Third Man with zither music by Anton Karras. That was the shot that killed Harry Lyme. He died in a sewer beneath Vienna. As those of you know who saw the movie, The Third Man. Yes, that was the end of Harry Lyme. But it was not the beginning. Harry Lyme had many lives. And I can recount all of them. How do I know? It's very simple. Because my name is Harry Lyme. <laughs> I 
I was down on my luck, way down, scraping the bottom. A couple of deals had fallen through, and I found myself in Paris with a lot of time on my hands and only the price of a beer in my pocket. I was spending my time and the money at Fouquet's, not because the beer is any cheaper at Fouquet's, but because... When you meet a nicer class of people, and besides that, you read the newspapers free. So I was reading a newspaper, and I came on the advertisement, one of those classified ads in the personal column. It was addressed to Harry Lyme. Harry Lyme being me, I read on with some interest. There was no signature, no address. Mr. Harry Lyme, it said, will find a business opportunity of an extremely profitable nature in the city of Tangier. Now, I might have thought this was one of the boys trying to hustle me out of Paris or just trying to be funny, except that... The advertisement mentioned the city of Tangier. Now, why Tangier? There are very few places in the world I haven't been to, and Tangier just happened at the time to be one of them. Also, Tangier, as everybody knows, is full of money, and I, I couldn't imagine anybody wanting to send me there right in the heart of the free gold area where every second address is a bank and every second person's an international operator just, just for a gag. Probably more chances in Tangier to grab a fast buck than you'll find in the world today. So I was inclined to take the ad a little seriously. Of course, it might have been a police trap. There are cops in countries all over the globe busy looking for me. And some of them are just sharp enough to try to pull me in on a queer come on like that. But the truth is that one of the only cities left where they don't happen to want me for what's known as questioning is the port of Tangier. And that's what sold me. There was just one complication. My beer was finished, and with it, my financial resources... How to raise the price of the ticket. What are your first impressions of Harry Lyme? Is there anything in the story yet that's making you like him? Tell us all about it in a comment below the show notes at www.englishmomentum.com slash DL089. You need to be logged in now to comment on blog posts, or you can also leave a comment on my Facebook page at Facebook.com slash English Momentum. Remember, the vocabulary is available on Quizlet at EnglishMomentum.com slash Quizlet. And for those who want to review the vocabulary and read the radio play transcript, the bonus PDF is now at www. Dot englishmomentum.com. Log in to English Momentum, go to this podcast episode, DL089, and you'll be able to download the bonus PDF. You could also be listening to Dramatic Listening on Stitcher. Stitcher is radio on demand. You'll find a link to Stitcher in my show notes at www.englishmomentum.com. Well, folks, that is it for this episode. Hope you're enjoying the new story and that you'll be back for more when the story continues in two weeks. Thanks for joining me again this week. Bye for now.